Good morning, youth of the world. Those of you who are in this room and your many, many friends and colleagues who are not here and some who don't even know of a place called the United Nations. In behalf of all of you, we gather. It's truly my honor and great joy to be with you here today. And in some way, it's not even a big surprise. Ever since I was a little girl, I played with dolls from around the world. I would lock myself in my room and spend endless hours creating experiences for these little beings that looked and dressed differently. My Hungarian grandmother, Mary, would bring me these dolls from her travels. Something in me lit up. And my other grandmother, Tanya, she bravely left her homeland of Russia to find safety in a foreign country far away from her family, safety and a better education for her three-year-old son, who is now 90 years old and in this room with us, Grandpa Sam. It is really my feminine bloodline seeking new lands and finding the bravery to learn about diverse peoples that has informed so much of my life work. In fact, when I was 21 years old, I was airlifted out of a childhood that had been laced with violence and alcoholism into, through my adolescence of drug abuse and rage and disordered eating. I was lifted out of that into the lap of dozens of brown-eyed Tamil children in the village of Kodakurai in South India. Nestled in the branches of a vast banyan tree, my years of acting out came to an abrupt halt. I began acting out in a new way. Contracted to teach children, I had to use the only common language I could find, our bodies. I jumped, I rolled, I reached, and I giggled as I taught them about adding and subtracting. Of course, we know who was teaching whom. In those special days of creative outreach, my body began to really move. My heart began to heal, my mind began to clear, and my soul began to speak to me. I was deeply involved in the question that so many of you are involved in, who am I? Who am I as a creative being? What is my purpose for this life? I was hungry and I was looking for a vision. Standing under those banyan trees far away from the familiar, a voice started to come to me. And that voice said, the children, Melissa, the children of the world are calling. And movement is your universal or a universal language. Of course, I did not know what that meant. I returned to my homeland, the United States, and proceeded to still be tied into some addictive behaviors and became a young single mommy of a beautiful young woman who's now a bit older than you all. But in my angst of needing to raise this child, I said, who will help me raise this child? And another whisper came, Melissa, you will raise the children that will help you raise the children. Of course, I had no idea what that really meant. And like all of us, I began out on a quest. How do I answer these calls coming from deep inside of me? and the needs that I see outside of myself. We know that at this time on the planet, the problems, the struggles that young people are facing are incomprehensible. We have 200 to, 250 to 300,000 young people involved in armed conflict at this time on the planet. Two million people, children, are being exploited in the global sex trade and the trafficking industry. We know that so many of the displaced, 46% of the 45 million displaced and growing people on this planet are children and youth. You know all these statistics. The incredible amount of poverty and hunger for our young people, it's not okay. And we are really here together to begin to consider how to address these issues. And I'd like to bring one more thought into our consideration. It's actually not a thought, it's a way of being. How many of you are involved in some kind of a movement, an environmental movement, and, and a human rights movement, a social action movement, an economics movement? Let's see your hands up. Awesome. And how many of you have movement, literally movement, as an integral part of your movement? A handful. Excellent. 
but not all. So I'm here to say that we have this universal place, language that we all share, that we can capitalize on, we can befriend as a way of one, healing our own trauma, repairing our own nervous systems, and as a way of finding ground inside ourselves, the body, and our capacity to move, to come into connection with universal rhythms, is a way for us not only to really repair our own wounds and turn our own suffering and turn them into service, but to also open our hearts to get to know what's really scaring us and is it something that we're actually excited about or is it something that we need to say no to that's dangerous? To get to know our outrage and realize that some of the energy tied up in our anger is actually is that call to action we've been talking about. It is something in us says something's out of integrity, something is not right for us, for our people, for the earth herself. And to allow ourselves right in our body are those tears that if they are locked up, we can't access our joy and ultimately our greatest capacity to think freely. We have so many young people being diagnosed as depressed and it indeed is a truth that there are people struggling in that way. But so much of that is the emotional backlog, the overwhelm, the inertia that comes upon us when we don't know how to move from inertia into action, to mobilize. As we move our bodies, we not only find our ground, unwind the trauma, open our hearts and develop our empathic ways of being on the planet. Yes, we clear our mind, but we also have the opportunity to begin to connect with one another, to literally feel one another. Here we are, it's August 6th, Hiroshima Day. Imagine if we could literally feel and see and smell and know the people on the ground before we push buttons that cause mass destruction. Our body and movement is a way to bring us back to our humanity so that we make choices that make sense. So um, also the body and movement connects us with something much bigger than ourselves. We asked just a few minutes ago, how do we keep going in the face of so much challenge? How do we find our way? Well, for some of us, if there, we didn't have a sense that there was something bigger our ancestry, call it whatever you call it, every religion has a name for it, our spirituality that connects us with something bigger than ourselves. If we didn't have a sense that there was some order, it would be very difficult to continue on in, its, in these times where there seems to be so much chaos. And we want to transform that into conscious community. So on that note, I don't want to talk about movement. I actually would like to invite you all to experience it with me. I know we're nearly at lunch and we're hungry, but I'd love to invite you to just jump up and let's take a risk together. Are you willing? Yeah. Woo! All right. So hop back up. I'm glad I'm not the first one to do that here. And in my work, I didn't even really tell you that much about my work. In my work, what I do is I work with hundreds of young leaders, people who've come out of really difficult situations and help them transform their own pain into medicine so that they can then return to their communities with initiatives that help transform their peoples and create sustainable lifestyles on the land or wherever they live in their urban environments. So we spend a lot of time moving our bodies, really doing the kinds of things I just talked about. Today we're just going to spend a minute or two. And, and we're going to do a call and response, okay? So I know it might be a little bit embarrassing, but if we all do it, it's actually just being human together. Okay, so I'll make a sound and a movement, and you do your best job to just imitate me. Ha! ha. Whoa. Whoa! Oh! Uh oh! Yes! Ah, movement! Expressing myself at the UN! Ah! Ah! Maybe not! Sure. sure. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. No, way. no way. Back off. Back off. Well, maybe. No, maybe. Okay. No, La, la, la. 
Together. Yes. Coming back together. <sighs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we did it. So take a minute and just have a seat and just notice how you feel. Just notice how you feel. Couple people call out what you notice. Even the sounds in the room, what do you notice? It's really funny. Even in the face of talking about some things that are not really funny. What else? Say it again. Energetic. We have energized ourselves. Anything else that you notice? There's a cheerfulness. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't matter whether you are a martial artist or a ballet dancer or a yoga person, whatever it is, really consider giving yourself a practice that allows you to sequence activation through your body. Let's all just shake out one more time. Just shake it out. Because <sighs> that's actually how trauma resolves, is through a certain kind of shaking. It's not as simple as that. But I really want to encourage all of you to find a way to bring movement so that your conversations that you have come from a heartful place, come from an open place, come from a clear thinking place. And when we get lost, we have ways to help ourselves get found, to help ourselves come home. This is what we take with us for the long journey. And in here, coded in our bodies, is a blueprint for how our soul wants to unfold and come of service in this lifetime. Obviously, we are met by the questions and the needs of the world around us. And it's that sweet interface that allows us to not only hear the call, but by moving, we actually are able to mobilize the intelligence and the life force that's needed to answer the call. So, um, I want to just tell you about a couple young people and then show you a closing film. Very brief so you can hear their voices themselves. I'd like to tell you about Arjun, a young man from South India, who came to me in a rage. His father had passed away at a young age and he couldn't see straight and he was creating some havoc in his homeland, in his small village of Kodakurai, actually where I began my work at 21 years old. And we began to work together, and this young man used dance, and he used the expressive arts to begin to unpack what was really bothering him. And he had community to witness and hear his story. And over time, he was able to move from anger into actual real compassion for the people who had caused him the suffering, and to realize that he wanted to grow into be a different kind of man in the world. Today, this man, He's no longer a young man. He's, he's in his 30s. Well, he is a young man. Living and working in his village. And he's created schools for hundreds and hundreds of young people, helping them study and learn and protect their indigenous arts. He had a vision. He couldn't even begin to hear it because he was so angry about the life circumstances that he was in. In addition, He's also become a bamboo farmer, and he's created right livelihood for himself, his family, and his community. I'd like to tell you about Svetlanka, a young American girl who came to me at 11 years old when she dropped out of school. Her mother was beside herself. Her father had gone, was nowhere around. And this young girl was emaciated. She was hardly eating at all. When she came into my work, she hid under the table. And we spent time just getting to know each other. And I would pass her art supplies under the table. And eventually, she started to move and express what was really hurting her. And she began to come out of the table and come into connection with the rest of the community in the dance. And we spent years giving her collage, paints. She made costumes. She made theater production. She wrote poetry. She was outrageous. And we just held a big space for this person to come back 
from the fringes of so much suffering. And today she's a renowned yoga instructor and she's doing social action theater and really, really serving many, many young people herself. Finally, I'd like to tell you about a group of young people that I had the privilege of working with in East Africa last winter. A group of Hutu and Tutsi youth leaders. All of them had experienced the genocide. They had watched their neighbors, in many cases, murder or rape their parents, their family members, people they loved. They traveled across great lands, some of them by themselves, some of them barely staying alive. And they'd landed in a refugee settlement together. And they decided, your generation, that they were not going to do what their parents had done. They were going to find a way forward through, <laughs> find a way forward through new ways of interacting. And here's what I discovered watching them. They did not have all the contemporary understanding of how to unwind trauma. But somehow, they knew to do the following things. Every morning, they woke up before the sunrise, and together they moved their bodies. Sometimes it was sports, sometimes it was dance. They took turns leading, but they, they broke a sweat and they were very disciplined about it. So they came to their day awake, clear in their thinking, open in their hearts, and ready to engage with one another. They worked the land, they rebuilt schools, they were purposeful and focused. They were not always hooked up to technology, I have to say, and I value technology enormously but they had time being in their bodies and being in rhythm with the natural cycles of life. They could see the scar stars. They could see the scars too. They could smell the flowers that they were growing. They could hear the sounds of the children. So they stayed connected to their humanity. They were not sexually awake in a premature way. They made a choice to focus all that fertility all that life force into their creativity. Yes, they held each other, they touched each other, they were orphans, they needed that contact. But they really allowed it to be in a developmentally sensitive and often appropriate way. And these were some of the most clear, focused young leaders I've ever seen. They came from the most extreme trauma, and, that, and they were crossing all the bridges, the bridges of race, class, gender, religion, all of it. And they were building a new community. And um, I share this story with you because we have much to learn from them and from each other. And the piece I want to bring is that we have a life force that's waking up in each of us that longs to be expressed onto this planet. I believe we collectively have the intelligence that's needed to solve the riddles of these, these times, but it's not going to happen from a place of complacency. It's going to happen from a place of awareness, sitting with that urgency, that burning, that longs to be a solution in these times. And it's going to take all of us. So in that, I just want to invite you all to mobilize, to bring movement to your movement, to not just think about it, but to let yourself feel what's going on and to really dig your roots deep in the ground, stand up, use your voices, and be the change. Move from suffering into service, from inertia into action, from your pain, turn it into medicine. And out of the voices of the young people themselves, let's hear what they say about this. Go for it. That last little video. Do we have time for it? It's two minutes. Do we or no? And as you go out there, my friends, bring beauty, bring love, and bring integrity. Bring those things. The world is desperate for them. We can honor our global family in our everyday decisions. This camp is the groundwork for that. We have some different cultures, but like inside of us, like everything's the same, inside. All these seeds that are planted all over the planet. Breaking down isolation and recreating that sense of, of togetherness. Remembering that there's people from different parts of the country or different parts of the world who are similar to me, who are there for me and who understand me. Because my life, is depending on you, and your life's depending on me. It's hand to hand, so we need each other. 
the unifying thread for them is that they are all called to help in these difficult times. I have a challenge for us to make things better. And uh, how can we make things better is to start to with yourself first. Remembering um, just how precious I am and how I have an important job to do here, and, and we all do. We have to get it done. Like, this is our job, especially after coming here. We have to change the world, period. Yeah. Thank you, Melissa. That was so extremely inspiring. Thank you very, very much. I think that was the perfect ending for our morning session. And I hope that now you understand why arts and culture are so extremely important for your personal development, but also for the sustainable development of this planet.